Hello and thanks for watching. My name is Angel Villar and I am a Network and Security Engineer at VMware. This is the third video of the series Security at Your Service. On the first one we have already seen an introduction to the NSX security model and its distributed firewall. On the second one we have seen how to apply micro segmentation inside one single data center. On this video we will extend that concept and we will see how to apply micro segmentation across data centers and how policies keep being enforced while VMs migrate from one data center to the other. On the fourth video we will see how to use NSX with automation tools and the benefits from that, for example to build a private cloud environment. And finally on the last video we will see a bit of the tools available in NSX to provide visibility of what, what's going on in the environment. Let's now focus on the topic for this video, micro segmentation across data centers. We will use the same lab environment than in previous videos for this demo, but in this case we have one single VM on data center 1 and we have two VMs on data center 2. So we have one web sub subnet with web03 on data center 1 and web04 on data center 2 and we have an app subnet with app03 on data center 2. Since we have already played enough with the NSX firewall and the default rule in the previous video, we will go now directly to the use case. We will enable several firewall rules that will filter traffic between our VMs. So in our case we will allow anything between web servers, we will allow only SSH and HTTP on port 8080 from web servers to app servers, and there is also another rule that will allow SSH and HTTP from this web and app servers to the app servers on data center 1. The last rule will be, will be a denial so that we ensure that only the specified protocols are allowed. We will first check that policies are enforced as expected and then we will migrate Web04 from Data Center 2 to Data Center 1 to see that security keeps being applied at all times. So we will see how policies are enforced during VM migration and also once the VM has definitely arrived at Data Center 1. Let's go for it. We will start reviewing that the policies we have defined are effectively being applied. So we will see that between web VMs we have any connectivity and from web to app VMs we will only have SSH and HTTP on port 8080. So let's check the firewall rules. The first thing we can see is that the default rule keeps being rejecting all traffic. The rules we used for demo number 2 are now disabled so that they don't interfere with this lab. And there is another section on top called Crosby Center Distributed Firewall Rules. These are what we call Universal Firewall Rules, which are the ones that are defined once here but applied in both data centers. We are going to enable the three of them and you can see these are the rules that we have been talking about while introducing this demo. So from web to web servers we will allow anything, from web to app servers we will only allow SSH and HTTP on port 8080 and there is one last rule that would allow communication between the web and app servers that span across data centers to the app servers that we use in demo 2 inside data center 1. We click on publish changes so that the rules are applied and there is another thing we need to do in this environment of multiple data centers because the default rule of NSX is independent on data center 1 than on data center 2. So we are now going to go to the NSX configuration which is specific for data center 2 and for that we will click on NSX manager secondary and we can see that the universal rules are already present here. This is because, as we said before, these rules are configured once and then available in both data centers. But on the contrary, we can see how the other section, the one that we use on demo 2, has disappeared. And this is because that section does not span across data centers. It's only local to data center 1. That said, let's go and change the default rule on data center 2 from allow to reject so that we make, sh make sure that only the protocols that we have defined in the universal policies go through. If we go back to the firewall configuration for data center 1, we can see the universal section is still here. We can see also that the default rule for data center 1 keeps rejecting all traffic and also that the local section for data center 1 has reappeared and the rules keep being disabled. So let's now go and check that the VMs are where we said they are. So we can see Web03 is on data center 1. It has an IP address of 172.17.10.13. It's hosted on ESXi2 and is connected to a universal web subnet. If we now go to Data Center 2, we can see here we have Web04, which has an IP address of 172.17.10.14, is hosted on ESXi3 and is also connected to the Universal Web Subnet. Finally, let's check Apo3, 
which has an IP address on a different IP subnet, 172.17.2013, is hosted on ESXi3 and connected to a different network, Universal App. So the environment we are using is the one we presented at the beginning of the video. So let's go and launch the consoles of the VMs we are using for the tests. We are launching now the console for Web03 VM, which is located on Data Center 1, and we go back and do the same for App03 which is located on data center 2. We launch the console. So we will using two VMs, one on each data center for these tests. On the left we will have Web03 on data center 1, on the right Apo3 on data center 2. So let's check the IP address of Web03. We can see it's the one we said it should be. And we issue a pin to the other Web VM, to Web VM on data center 2, Web04, and the pin wor works. So we have a pin running across data centers. If we try to ping the app VM, the ping fails because it's been blocked by the default rule of the firewall. But we can issue an SSH and the SSH works because we are allowing SSH from web VMs to app VMs. So we are running an SSH from data center 1 to data center 2 that is being allowed by the NSX firewall. So we can see the prompt has changed and we are effectively inside of app 03. So we close the session and we go back to web 03. And now we will move into the browser to run web tests. So we can reach the other web server on the other data center. We can also reach the app server because HTTP on port 8080 from web to app is allowed by the firewall. So le let's now move into the app 3 VM, which is on data center 2, to run similar tests. So we first check its IP address, which is what it should be, and we try to ping the web servers. First web server, sorry, this is a typo. So first web server 3, it fails and then web server 4 which fails. So communication from the app server to the web server is being blocked. It doesn't matter if the web servers are on data center 1 or data center 2. Let's go to the browser to run the web tests and we can see that both web connections to web 03 and web 04 fail because the rules do not allow it. So policies are being enforced as we define them on the NSX firewall. It doesn't matter if VMs are on one data center or the other. Now that we have seen the universal policies are being enforced as expected, let's move to the second use case of this demo. So we are taking Web04 VM and we are moving it from Data Center 2 to Data Center 1 to see that policies keep being enforced at all times, while the VM migrates and also once it has arrived to Data Center 1. For that, we keep using the same test VMs. On the left, we have Web03 on Data Center 1, and on the right, we have Apo3 on Data Center 2. From Apo3, we issue a pin to the Web04, which is the VM we are migrating, and we do the same on the left. From Web03, we issue another pin to Web04. We can see one works, while the other fails, we leave them running. We move to the view of our VMs, we right-click over Web04, select Migrate, and we are going to change both host and storage. This is because in the lab we are not using stretch storage across data centers, we use local storage to the ESXi hosts. Select the destination data store, in this case the data store of host 2, because it's the one with more space available. And next we are offered one single host as possible destination, which is the one that has the data store local, in our case ESXi2. We also select the folder where we want the VM to be added, and next we need to select the network. So as the source network we are using the universal web switch, so we are going to select the same at destination. We click on browse so that we have better visibility, and we select the universal web network. Finally, we select the priority we want to give to this VM migration and we review all the data and we click finish so that the migration starts. We are going to open the tasks pane so that we can see how the migration goes and also we are bringing to front the console of the Web03 VM and we can see the ping keeps working so far. We will now fast forward the video until the migration finishes and then we will check the counters on both VMs to see that the policies have been enforced at all times. Migration is finally complete and actually Web04 has been at data center 1 for a few seconds. So let's go back to our VMs and see what has happened with the pings. On the left side of the screen we have Web03 which is located on data center 1 and which has been pinging Web04 during the whole process. Once we recover the control we will, we will stop the ping and we will look at these statistics and we will see that no packet has been lost during the migration. So here we go, and we can see 0% packet lost. 
Let's check the same on the other VM, APO3, which has been on data center 2 during the whole process. Looking at the ping statistics, we can see 100% packet lost, confirming that policies have been enforced at all times even when VMs migrate from one data center to the other. The last thing to check is that now the Web04 VM is located on ESXi2, which belongs to data center 1. And this concludes the demo of this video of the series. What we have seen is that with NSX we can have granularity and control not just inside one data center or inside one IP subnet, but we can extend that model of micro segmentation even across data centers. And not only that, but also we keep enforcing security even when VMs migrate from one data center to the other. And again, the key for all this is that the NSX security model is independent from infrastructure. Again, thanks for watching. I hope you have found the demo interesting and don't forget to check my YouTube channel because these and all other videos of this series will be uploaded there. Thank you.